I'm setting up the um, camelback, the small camelback. Well, it's not that small, I guess. I think it's like 18 inches. Uh, for shaping, try to get this thing ready to go. So um, I've got it set up in there um, best I could. I got it even. I mean, there's definitely some bumps and pits and whatnot in there. So um, I did the best I could. I think there's about maybe three or four thousands difference between the far end and the close end so uh, I'm gonna just do a touch off here and see what happens so there's the first scratch just barely touched there so how I did this setup I measured first I just used an indicator across the top surface and then I thought well it's pretty pretty wavy it's not very good at all I don't know if you can see this but there's a pretty large dip in the middle of that thing. So then I thought, well, let's try this. So I took a uh, Minotoya digital calipers and I measured the distance between this surface and that was uh, 0.61 inches. And then I measured the same on this side and that was 0.61 inches. So I figured that's as close as I'm gonna get it, especially with that big dip in the middle there. So um, we're just gonna keep on going with for it and see how this works out. This pass I dialed it down ten thousandths, so see how this goes. Last time all I got out of it was that little scratch right there. Here's a little pucker factor video, look at this. How close do you think that is? I tried to get it just as close as I could, but I learned a lesson after setting this machine here. I didn't take into account that that ram is going to go past the back of that guard but it most certainly does, and it can go quite a ways farther past that. So if I ever somehow someday forget that it can, and I set it, well, guess what? I'm going to have a hole in my wall. Here's another 10 thousandths down, it's just starting to cut right on there a little bit. Um, starting to touch. And um, I was just watching A Bomb's video about this same exact process, and uh, before he did the bottom of his, um, he cleaned up the side so he got a better grip on it. Um, for A Bomb, his time is money. And I totally understand that. He has to take really deep cuts with a shaper to get the job done and uh, then get back to making money with his machines. This for me is just a hobby, so I'm taking extraordinarily light cuts, like stupid light cuts for this size equipment. I understand that, but, um, you know, that on this thing, it's not very, the handle isn't very deep. And yeah, I could probably clean it up, but I feel like I got a pretty darn good grip on it and it's reasonably flat, flat enough anyways. So I'm just gonna stick with what I'm doing right now. And uh, if it starts to shift on me or move, I will, uh, I'll reconsider. But for now it's going all right. I'm just taking 10 thousandths of a cut, which is really nothing for this machine. So hopefully I'll get away with it. I'm gonna try to show the uh, tool passing over you know how much of a gap there is between the tool and the workpiece there um, it appears it might be up to like an eighth of an inch that I got to go down to clean up in the middle there but that's all right I've got all the time in the world for this here's what the entire operation looks like right now it's 
step toe 24 inch shaper. Here's what the moving bits look like down there. The apron and carriage mechanism. Doing its typewriter thing. Another 10,000 down. I just did some math on uh, how much power this thing is using while it's in operation. Um, the motor is seven and a half horsepower, three phase at 440. I'm running that off of a uh, rotary phase converter and uh, doing the math on how much current it's drawing now versus when it's just uh, when the rotary phase converter is just idling. This thing is running at about 3,400 watts load at this speed. Not too bad, really, for what you're getting out of it, I guess. We're getting there now. It's a little low area there to clean up in the middle. be the last pass here. There's just that one little gazacha in the middle there. Should clean up nice on this pass. The moment of truth. It's always exciting to see whether or not you got the cleanup or not. Oh, 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 yeah. Nice. So, there, that's the first surface cleaned up. <laughs> Two more to go. Yesterday, I flattened off the main surface of this uh, camelback casting. And today, I'm going to finish the sides. So, this side. It's just going to be a straight down cut. I wish I had uh, the down feed, power down feed option on this thing, but back when the Army Corps of Engineers ordered it for the Lake Alatoona Dam, uh, they decided not to get that option. If it did have that option, you'd see uh, the devices, the mechanical devices on there. Um, and then after that, I'm going to do this angle uh, down here. Now, some of them are 45. This one is going to be 60 because I need it for a project for my little South Bend shaper. And it's also precast at 60 degrees, so I figure why not just keep it at that. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is, after, when I'm ready to cut that angle, you loosen up the uh, these two bolts. There's one on this side, one on the other side. And then swing the head down and put uh, 45 degrees on the zero mark here. That's what it looks like. So um, that's the project for today. Just taking a first scratch pass here. The way I'm going to have to do this without the power down feed is turn this handle. Every time it comes past, I'm going to have to give it a little tweak. So I'm going to try to get that when I do that. All right, it's coming forward. Give it a little twist. Then it takes a cut on that pass. So every time it comes out, I'm just going to have to feed it down a little bit. And that's fed down. A little more. It's 
the way that thing is, the clapper's dragging. I might have to move that. I'd probably be smart to move that uh, angle over here to the to the left on this side because if that thing grabs on the way back, it's going to make a big mess. It's not. I don't know. It's still doing all right, I think, but. I saw what happened to A-bomb, and if A-bomb can make a mistake like that, well, I am certainly going to make that mistake. So, <laughs> hopefully I can learn, and I'm keeping a close eye on it, and right now it seems to be behaving, so maybe we'll just let it run for the first pass, and then change it a little bit on the next pass. Here's what it looks like after the first pass. It doesn't quite get down to the end here, but... There's not too too much to go on that, so I do have the uh, the vice dialed in, but I mean it's it's basically just equalizing the difference between the two unfinished edges here, and that's just kind of what I chose to do and how to um, get around facing those surfaces first. Um, I think it's going to be plenty fine for this. All the surfaces will be in relation to each other, and the rest is just a handle. So don't really need to worry about it. I just rotated the clapper box out of center over to the left so when it drags on the way back it should have the effect of kicking outwards and away from the work as opposed to catching and taking chunks out like what happened to A-bomb. So thank you very much to A-bomb for sharing your mistakes. That's, uh, that's what it takes for people to learn and not make the same mistakes. Thank you very much. All right, now I'm going to start feeding down. It's just barely tapping, so I just gave it a little tick there. All right, that's working good. I missed the, I missed giving it another twist here. So, give it a little bit. All right. Now it's not doing that dance on the way back. The clapper box isn't going tick, 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 tick on the way back and almost binding. So, I think that was a huge tip that I learned from A-bomb, I, I would have screwed that up for sure and ended up with a disaster, as is my way, um, just being a home gamer here, not knowing what I'm doing really, so, um, yeah, it's, that's an extremely valuable tip that he passed along, for me anyway. So what I'm doing is just giving a little tweak. And it goes, it's still going straight down. See that box? I twisted the clapper box to the side, but we're still at perfectly vertical, straight up and down. Uh, so whenever this comes back, it's just going straight down into the work. So even though everything looks sort of cattywampus here, we're still getting a perfectly vertical cut on the work. So I think it's going to be just fine. Twist, 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 and so on. Here's where we're at after the second pass. There's still about maybe two inches to clean up down on the far end, but um, it's, it's going really well. I'm very happy. So now in this case, I just made that last bit, we still have that two inches to go. Um, in this case, instead of uh, moving down on the uh, headstock there, the main body part of it, we're going to um, move it over just a little bit, just give it a little bump uh, and move over. And I'm sure there's a way to see the, uh, the amount that it's moved over. I guess I'm gonna have to look really close. I don't think you can see in there, but. There's the indicator, and I got it kind of buried underneath the, uh, the table here, <laughs> the cross slide, because I honestly I could have set this up a little bit better. But um, we're gonna go. I'm just gonna move it over maybe ten thousandths, and that, uh, and then leave enough for doing a cleanup pass. That should pretty well knock out that far side. Well, after the next pass, I thought I was gonna clean it up completely, but we still have about three quarters of an inch to go down there. So <laughs> one more time. I just noticed something, there's a little void right there that uh, after I made a scratch pass on that, after moving it over, that's gonna need to get out of there. So I gotta move it over even more. 
All right, I got that edge all cleaned up. Um, that's uh, it took out that little chunk that was out here. Plus, um, now I'm going to do a. I'm just going to bump it over just a, a hair. Take a clean up pass on that. Try to get it a little less gnarly. Uh, right now, it would make a, a fantastic uh, file. <laughs> so we'll try to get it a little better before scraping. For the cleanup pass, I'm giving it just like five thousandths down feed each stroke, so not much at all. I just want to make sure that I'm getting as clean as possible before starting to scrape, because every every pass you can scrape, save during scraping is uh, very much time well spent doing in advance. So that's what it looks like on the uh, final cut. Oops, got bumped. On the uh, final pass there, you can see the difference in the finish quality just using a very small step over and a very slow, slow down feed. I just want to show it is actually an 18 inch uh, straight edge. I was just guessing before, but all right, here's the um, the final product. That, that's as good as it's going to get this type of surface on the shaper. There's that little line from when I made that last video and I wasn't doing the feeding it down at a consistent rate when I stopped to talk about it. And that's where that little line came from. But that's uh, that's going to come out really easy. It's not um, it's not not a great finish by any means, but I mean for a shaper, um, that's pretty much as good as it's going to get. Uh, we're going to obviously scrape this in, and uh, that will take care of any of the roughness. Next was that 60 degree angle down there. But that'll have to wait till after breakfast. So I'm all fed and watered now and I came back down to the shop here and I'm, I just moved over the, uh, the head there, the clapper box, so that it's swung to the right now. So when this thing returns, it comes on the return, it should swing away, out and away from the work without snagging underneath this lip. And that's what unfortunately happened to A-bomb there. Um, so I almost made a huge mistake here. This angle here is 60 degrees. So I was like, all right, well, I need 60 degrees. So I came over here and I swung it over to 60 degrees and I locked it in and I was, and then I was doing my testing and looking up, at, looking at it from all different kinds of angles before I turned anything on. And I was like, wait a minute here. That is too much of an angle because this 60 degrees <laughs> You know, if I had it swung all the way, it would have been at an angle like this on there, cutting out a huge amount of material. So I almost made a, a bloody big amateur big boo-boo. So <laughs> uh, caught it, and uh, whew, lucky there. But uh, hopefully I've got the, uh, the tool set up properly here. Um, it's the same tool. I'm just using the corner of it. Um, not quite at a 45 degree angle, but um, you know, it's simply to remove the bulk of the material. This isn't, it's not rocket science. It's, it's a lawnmower. No, thank you, Terrell. Um, <laughs> it's just trying to bulk hog off material. So pretty much anything that'll do that job is all we need at the moment. I'm doing a setup here to make that first pass. And now that, this, um, now that it's all running and along there, you can see that big bow that's in there. It's a pretty significant bow, so it's going to take some doing to get this cleaned up. But uh, everything's looking good so far. I got good clearance everywhere, and um, just got to go touch off now and make a scratch pass, see how it goes. All right, the clapper's working as I was hoping. Let me, uh, it's just touching at this one edge down here. I'm going to dial it in. There, clap. You hear it? And that's what we want. We want that thing to swing free. All right, and it's only touching right there, just a little tiny bit. I suppose I should get some of this so you can see how it's going. Just dial it down a little bit. Just touching right at the edge. Oops, I missed it that time. I didn't get it dialed down. So that was just a spring pass. Oh, it is touching on both ends, so that's good. Once again, there's that huge bow in the middle, so that's going to take a while to clean up. 
All right, I'm very, very happy with it so far. We'll just keep going. Here's what it looks like after the first pass. So you can see the low area that was uncut there. Um, yeah. Okay, that's almost exactly what I was hoping for on that first pass. Super happy. Here's the second pass now. I'll dial it down a little bit. Now that was a full pass. It didn't break in the middle there. Still got that bow sort of at the front, so we got a ways to go on there, but this is uh, very satisfying actually watching this happen. <laughs> I hope everybody else likes it too, or at least a certain type of person likes it. Here's what it looks like after the second pass. Still the big void in the bottom, and that, that area right up at the top here. That's not quite touched off yet, so. Here's after the third pass. Still not cleaned up on top there. Not getting all the way, I don't think we're getting all the way down to the bottom. Well, can't quite see, you have to go in a little closer. Yeah, I think we are cleaning up all the way to the bottom. It's just that top little uh, rounded off segment there. After the fourth pass, everything is cleaned up except for that little ridge. You still gotta get in there some more and get that out of there. Right now it's about, ooh, what, eight inches long or something like that? Seven, eight inches. Fifth pass, still not cleaned up. Still got the tiniest little bit to go. Hopefully this next large movement over will get that last of that. I mean, it is right on the bitter edge, but it's still not cleaned up. So, one more time. It did clean up on the sixth pass. So we got a clean edge and a clean uh, cut all the way across on that last pass. So now I'm just gonna move it over to itty bitty bit. Uh, maybe five thousandths and try to take a, a cleanup cut on that. Um, I've been doing approximately on the hour 12 uh, strokes per rotation of that handle, but I'm also going to double that. I'm probably going to go up to 24 stroke uh, strokes per revolution on that to uh, hopefully clean it up just a little bit better. It worked pretty well on the other side, so I'll try it again. Here's the start of the cleanup cut. I'll try to let you see that as it happens. The, the start of it is the critical part. It's got to go real slow so you don't make any chips on that edge. There, and now it's scratching. Just barely. There we go. Ever so small. And this is going to take about a half hour to do. I'm sure you don't want to watch all that. I wanted to show how much I'm turning it down. Each motion is about that much. And I'll have to check the timestamps to see uh, how long it actually took. But theoretically, this thing's running at 11 strokes per minute. Um, but that's how much I'm moving it. It's not much at all, and hopefully that'll do a lot to improve the surface finish. I'm almost done uh, with it, but I don't want to miss any of these uh, strokes to keep it as even as possible. So, see how it looks in a minute. Alright, that's the end of it. I think it turned out alright. You could just cut yourself on that edge, I guarantee you that. Probably this one too. It's plenty sharp, but uh, alright. I gotta ask myself again, did I miss anything before I <laughs> take it out of the fixture here? Oh boy, out of the vice. Because um, then once, once you take it out, you can't put it back. So here's how it turned out over at the surface plate. The banged up, no good, gotta get it refinished surface plate. 
I'm very, very pleased. You know, guys, I will admit to you, I am a perpetual screw-up in the shop. When it comes to doing this stuff, it's usual for me to have some kind of terrible, terrible mistake <laughs> where I either make a part useless or anything like, you know, you know how it goes, where I just don't seem to have much luck, and it's probably because I rush, probably because I'm inexperienced, probably because of a lot of things. I'm just a hobbyist. But this one actually turned out, uh, and I'm very, very happy about it. Um, once again, thanks to A-Bomb for sharing his uh, trials and tribulations with us, because otherwise, if he wouldn't have put that video out, I guarantee you I would have chipped out this edge on here, and it would have been another one of those situations uh, for me. So I'm going to let this thing cool down. It's, it's just slightly warm uh, to the touch right now. Just slightly warmer than the ambient. i got to let it cool down, and then I'll do an initial spotting on it and see, uh, see how it how it goes. You see right now it's hinging very close to the end over there and I would expect that it's hinging on the end on the left um, because of when the, uh, when the tool goes across it, it deflects it, it warps it, so there's always going to be some kind of uh, deflection towards the ends and that creates high spots on the ends. No matter how solid your tool is that you're using uh, that just seems to be the way it is. So we'll uh, we'll do some initial spotting on it after it uh, cools down and uh, equalizes with room temperature. Well, equalizes with the temperature of the surface plate, anyways. Another thing you can do to see if it's even relatively level is give it a tap. Like you can hear that. That means it's rocking back and forth between that point and that point. That point is solid. This is. This one is a little bit higher than the rest of them. It's stable there. Stable there. But there's the, I guess it would be the low spot. 